Hello students, this is Perio, Chapter 16, Lecture 1. Periodontitis is broken down into three categories, chronic, aggressive, and other less common types. We have already looked at chronic, which is the most common type. This chapter covers aggressive periodontitis. The characteristics of aggressive periodontitis include the bacterial infection is characterized by rapid destruction of the periodontal ligament and the supporting alveolar bone. It is a high risk for tooth loss, and there is commonly a poor response to periodontal therapy. Aggressive periodontitis is less common than chronic periodontitis. Aggressive periodontitis was previously known as early onset periodontitis and was thought to occur only in individuals under the age of 30. However, it was renamed because it can occur at any age. The primary features of aggressive periodontitis are the rapid destruction of attachment and no obvious signs or symptoms of systemic disease. Other family members, such as parents or sibling, may also have aggressive periodontitis. Secondary features are relatively small amounts of plaque compared to the severity of the disease. In other words, the disease severity seems exaggerated given the light amount of plaque. There are also elevated proportions of Aggregatibacter actinomycetacomatans, or AA. And there also seem to be phagocyte abnormalities present. Secondary features also include elevated production of prostaglandin E2 and interleukin 1 beta. A lack of clinical signs of disease is also present. The tissue may appear to be normal. However, probing reveals deep periodontal pockets and there is a poor response to periodontal therapy. Disease progression. Chronic periodontitis is a slow progressing disease. Aggressive periodontitis exhibits episodic attachment loss occurring in a succession of acute destructive phases with intermittent inactive phases. This diagram shows the episodic disease progression. There are two types of aggressive periodontitis localized, or LAP, and generalized, or GAP. LAP has an onset of disease around puberty. It exhibits localized, rapid tissue destruction around permanent first molars and or incisors. It involves no more than two teeth, other than first molars and incisors. Lack of tissue inflammation and minimal amounts of plaque seem inconsistent with the amount of periodontal destruction. It is frequently associated with AA. Vertical bone loss around first molars and incisors begin around puberty is a classic radiographic sign of LAP. LAP was previously referred to as localized juvenile periodontitis. This image shows localized destruction despite sparse plaque and no supragingival calculus deposits. This image shows the characteristic bone loss on the first molar teeth as indicated by the white arrows. Generalized aggressive periodontitis usually has an onset in people under the age of 30. 
It is generalized interproximal attachment loss affecting at least three permanent teeth other than the first molars and incisors. It has an episodic disease progression and the minimal amounts of plaque seem inconsistent with the amount of periodontal destruction. The appearance of GAP, type 1 inflammation. Gingival tissues may appear acutely inflamed, ulcerated, and fiery, re fiery red. This appearance is believed to occur in the destructive phase of the disease progression. Type 2 pink tissues. Gingival tissues may appear pink. Deep pockets are detected with the probe. And this tissue response may coincide with the periods of disease inactivity. This was previously called generalized juvenile periodontitis or early onset periodontitis. The rate of attachment loss is rapid in GAP compared to chronic periodontitis. Radiographs of patients with GAP reveal severe alveolar bone loss around most teeth. This is an image of a child with aggressive periodontitis. Aggressive periodontitis, despite good daily self-care by the patient, is shown in this image of an adult. Here is another image of an adult who also has aggressive periodontitis despite good daily self-care. And here is another image. Aggressive periodontitis is less common than chronic periodontitis and is characterized by rapid destruction of attachment, high risk for tooth loss, and poor response to periodontal treatment. Localized aggressive periodontitis has an onset around the time of puberty. LAP cases have bone loss on the first molar and incisor teeth. Generalized aggressive periodontitis occurs in persons under 30 years of age. GAP cases have bone loss around most teeth. Screening for aggressive periodontitis. A small but significant proportion of children and young adults are affected by aggressive periodontitis. Do not assume that young patients are healthy patients. Early detection is very important given the severity and rapid progression of aggressive periodontitis. Measurements of attachment loss on primary teeth or partially erupted teeth may be difficult. Bite wing radiographs taken for carry screening should also be screened for marginal bone loss. In the absence of local contributing factors, such as restorations, a distance of 2 millimeters should cause the clinician to suspect periodontitis. This image shows the distance from the CEJ to the alveolar crest. Screening for adolescents and adults. Periodontal probing is the method of choice for adolescents and adults. If aggressive periodontitis is suspected, the medical history should be updated to rule out possible systemic contributing factors. Periodontitis as a manifestation of systemic disease is the disease category used when the systemic condition is the major predisposing factor. Treatment of aggressive periodontitis is similar to treatment for chronic periodontitis. Smoking cessation, evaluation of patient self-care, individualized self-care instructions, and periodontal instrumentation as well as antimicrobial therapy, removal or control of local contributing factors, surgical debridement of soft tissue, reevaluation of initial therapy outcomes after an appropriate time interval. Due to potential genetic link in aggressive periodontitis, evaluation and counseling of other family members is indicated. Periodontitis is controlled if further attachment loss can be prevented. 
control of attachment loss may not be possible in aggressive periodontitis. In such cases, a reasonable treatment goal is to slow the progression of the disease. Desired outcomes for aggressive periodontitis include significant reduction in gingival inflammation, reduction of dental plaque, and prevention of further loss of attachment or alveolar bone. The best long-term outcome is achieved when the patient practices excellent self-care. The patient completes scheduled maintenance or recall appointments at the appropriate intervals. Non-responsive disease sites. Disease sites that do not respond successfully to treatment may occur and are characterized by inflamed gingival tissues, increasing attachment loss, plaque levels which are not compatible with health, and increased tooth mobility. Recap of aggressive periodontitis. Early detection is very important given the severity and rapid progression. In children, bite wing radiographs taken for caries screening should also be screened for bone loss. Do not assume that young patients are healthy patients. Treatment is similar to that for chronic periodontitis and control of aggressive periodontitis may not be possible in all patients. In such cases, a reasonable goal is to slow the progression of disease. This concludes Perio Chapter 16, Lecture 1.